Many people misunderstand how buffs or amps work in the Naruto series. An amp is essentially an ability that increases your strength, speed, chakra reserves and all that. And there are several, the curse mark, sage mode, the QB chakra, and the list goes on. But people usually have the wrong idea as to how they work mechanically within the series. And today we're going to be discussing how the amps actually work and the strength characters gain whenever they use them. Before that, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Amps in the Naruto series, with one exception, are not power multipliers. They add to the power of the character. They do not multiply it. This concept that amps multiply the powers of characters in the Naruto series was spread out because in the Sasuke retrieval arc, it established that the characters who have the curse mark level 2 gain a 10 times boost to their power levels, essentially. They get 10 times stronger. That is stated by Jirobo in his fight against Choji. And sure, Jirobo definitely gets 10 times more powerful when he is using the curse mark level 2, but that doesn't mean the curse mark multiplied his power by 10 times. It just added so much power to him that he feels as though he is 10 times more powerful than his base form. In the Sasuke retrieval arc, the characters that have a curse mark level 2 are Tayuya, Jirobo, Kitomaru, Sakon, Kimimaru, and Sasuke, and they all gain a substantial power up whenever they use the curse mark. However, the power up seems so great because these characters in the grand scheme of things are not that powerful. If you compare to characters in later Shippuden, they are nothing essentially. The curse mark for them feels like this massive amp because they are not so powerful to begin with. Imagine that you play a video game, I don't care which game it is, but your character has a strength score of 2. Now, if you get a buff in the game that gives you a plus 20 to strength, that means your character will be 10 times more powerful just because he got that buff. Now, imagine you leveled up your character, you played a lot of hours, you grinded, and you got powerful in the game, and now your character has a strength score of 100. If you get the same buff you got before of a plus 20 to strength, Strength, it will be the same power-up. However, your character will only feel 20% more powerful and not 10 times more powerful. And we can see this is very much the case with a curse mark and also with other amps. But the curse mark is the easiest one to point out because more characters use it during the series. Take Sasuke. Sasuke had to use the curse mark in his fight against Naruto in part 1. Otherwise, he wouldn't have won. He clearly got way more powerful when he activated the level 2 of the curse mark, but after the time skip, when Sasuke has gotten much stronger than he was before, the curse mark is not very impactful anymore. He doesn't use the curse mark very often in Shippuden at all. Sasuke doesn't really use the curse mark to give him boosts in strength in Shippuden, he uses it much more because of the wings the curse mark provides him. He uses the wings to block attacks and also fly, and that's what he uses the curse mark the most for. It's not as though he needs the curse mark to provide him a buff in strength because it's not that much of an addition to it now that Sasuke is so much more powerful. Sasuke uses the curse mark against Orochimaru and he stomps Orochimaru the fight lasts for two minutes and the curse mark wasn't really that impactful because Sasuke won that fight in Orochimaru's consciousness essentially when he took over Orochimaru's body. The physical aspect of the fight wasn't what won the fight for Sasuke anyway. Then he uses a partial transformation to block Jugo's attack attack, which wasn't really that necessary anyway. I think Sasuke only did that to show off because he is clearly blitzing Jugo and Sugetsu in the next scene. And then Sasuke fights Deidara and he uses the curse mark level 2 there only so that he can fly and block Deidara's attacks. It's not as though he is powering himself up because he can't keep up with Deidara. He doesn't feel faster or more powerful. He can fly now, but that's about it. And case in point, in the fight against Itachi, which which is Sasuke's most important fight of his life, he uses the second stage of the curse mark for a very brief moment so that he can get a boost to his chakra and use the fire style that he shoots up towards the sky. And that was 10 seconds of a curse mark level 2 amp and he didn't use it anymore against Itachi because it wouldn't be very effective. Hebi's 
Sasuke, who had already absorbed Orochimaru, wouldn't feel much of a difference whenever he uses the curse mark. However, if we contrast that to Forest of Death Sasuke in the tuning exams, the first time he used the curse mark ever, Sasuke got a 20 times amp. It was insane because that Sasuke was honestly pretty weak. He got stomped by Lee with his weights on and the curse mark amp, even though it was a first stage curse mark, was insane. He was able to dodge attacks that came at him at the speed of sound with the curse mark level 1. But if Sasuke used that curse mark level 1 in Shippuden, it wouldn't make a difference whatsoever. Now just imagine for a second the version of Sasuke that fought Dater. He was beating Dater without the curse mark, if that curse mark gave Sasuke in that part of the story a boost of 10 times to his strength, he would be the most powerful character in the series because Deidara is clearly high Kage level and if Sasuke got a 10 times amp on top of that, he would be Madara Uchiha. So no, the curse mark does not multiply the character's strength. It just feels like that in part 1 because the characters using the curse mark are relatively relatively weak. Or are you gonna tell me that in a hypothetical scenario where Madara Uchiha gets a curse mark and he uses the second stage of the curse mark, which would look awesome by the way, but would Madara get 10 times more powerful? No, he would not because that would be completely insane. A curse mark buff to someone like Madara would be absolutely negligible and I'm gonna talk more about Madara later. We can also take other types of amps to prove that this theory is correct. For instance, Sage Mode. Now, the first character that uses Sage Mode in the story is Jiraiya. Of course, Jiraiya gets much stronger when he is using Sage Mode, even though it's not a complete form. No one ever says how many times stronger he gets, and this type of thing is kind of difficult to compute when characters don't really say. And even when they say, it's not as though Naruto characters are power scalers and know exactly how much more powerful they get whenever they get imps. It's as though you're playing a sport wherever sport it is and a ball comes your direction and then a second ball comes your direction and if their speeds are different you're gonna say like the second ball was twice as fast as the first one but that's an estimate and the same thing applies for Jirobo in part one for example he says he's ten times more powerful with the curse mark but this is an estimation yeah it's probably somewhat accurate but he could be like eight times or twelve times we don't know Naruto is a much better comparison when he gets sage mode because base Naruto in the beginning and the middle of Shippuden wasn't very powerful. He wasn't a speedster, he wasn't physically strong, he was pretty average in those regards. And then when he gets Sage Mode, he becomes a beast. He is insane, he is lifting massive rhinoceros and all that. He also gets much faster, his reaction time improves substantially. It's as though Naruto got 50, 100 times more powerful, maybe I'm exaggerating, but he definitely gets dozens of times more powerful than his base form when he fights against Spain. However, when Naruto uses Sage Mode on top of his KCM2 in the war arc, the difference isn't very noticeable actually. The character doesn't do anything that much more impressive. Sure, he is able to hit Jubito when he has Sage Mode, but that's a condition essentially. You need Sage Mode Chakra laced with your normal chakra so that you can even hurt the Tentails Jinchuriki. But other than that, it wasn't as though Naruto got massively faster because he got a Sage Mode amp on top of his KCM2, or even massively stronger and all that. Sure, he got marginally stronger, but nothing too noticeable. And don't confuse that with when Naruto gets a power boost from Sage Energy in his final battle against Sasuke whenever the Indra's arrow is about to clash with the two massive Ross and Shurikens, because at that time, Naruto just got a massive amount of Sage Energy Chakra infused into one of the Ross and Shurikens. It wasn't as though he was amping his body. He was just gathering more chakra so they could use against Sasuke. And that's the thing too, depending on how much sage energy you're able to gather from your environment, the more powerful the amp is gonna be, obviously. So if Naruto is able to gather more sage chakra during his sage mode, he is gonna be more powerful because that sage chakra in a higher amount is gonna add more to Naruto's base strength. But it's not gonna multiply it. And we can clearly see that's the case when Madara drains Hashirama Sage Chakra in the war as well. If Sage Mode multiplied the strength of the user, Madara wouldn't just say, oh, so this is nature energy, this is too easy to control. Madara was disappointed 
disappointed with the power granted by Sage Moon. He was actually like, oh, this is pretty weak. I have no trouble controlling this whatsoever, and this is the first time I'm trying. Which serves to show that if the character is that much more powerful than the Amp, the Amp's not gonna make that much of a difference. Now, sure, the Sage Moon is gonna give Modder a better sensory capabilities, and it is going to give him a boost to his reaction time, speed, strength, and all that, but it's not a multiplication of his base form. Like when I mentioned before, when your character has 100 in strength and he gets a plus 20, but I would even argue that in this case, it's not even a plus 20 for Mater, it would be like a plus 5 at most. Also, amps can differ, even amps that have the same name, such as the Sage Mode, have different strengths. Some characters are better at using amps than others, like Jiraiya and Naruto. Naruto is much better at Sage Mode than Jiraiya. There are amps that just vary a lot, such such as the Nine Tails amps to Naruto. Every time he gets a Nine Tails amp, it's a very different amount of chakra that he gets, depending on how emotional he is and how important that moment of the fight is. But the Nine Tails amps also work like that. They just add to Naruto's strength. We can see in part one that when Naruto uses the QB amp against Neji, against Gara, and against Sasuke, he gets a massive power boost. It's night and day, especially when he gets the one tail against Sasuke. But when we go to Shippuden and Naruto gets the lower QB amps when he has the red eyes and the whiskers more pronounced He doesn't look that much more powerful because then Naruto is already more powerful than part 1 Naruto obviously So the QB chakra is adding to Naruto's strength and that will look more dramatic when Naruto is a kid and much weaker And then there's KCM which works exactly the same It adds to your strength and speed most of all it adds a lot to your speed I mean Naruto Naruto and base isn't really fast, man. He, Naruto is pretty basic. But when he gets KCM1, he is one of the fastest ninjas alive. He is able to dodge a full powered Raikage. On the other hand, when Minato gets his KCM, he gets faster, definitely, but the character doesn't seem different. You know, there isn't this massive change on Minato whenever he's using the KCM. It's not something out of this world like it is for Naruto, who gets from I'm not very fast to being one one of the fastest characters alive. Minato gets from being extremely fast to being very extremely fast, and that's it. We also have Choji's enhancement pills, and it is stated that the red pill, the third pill, gives Choji 100 times his normal strength. And sure, it might give that Choji from part one, the Genning, which is one of the weakest named characters in the series, a 100 times boost to his strength. But if you give that thing to someone like Guy, it would make him stronger, but it wouldn't make him a hundred times stronger, otherwise he might as well use that instead of opening the eighth gate. Now all the amps we've analyzed so far are things you pull from outside sources. The curse mark and sage mode are straight up pulling nature energy into the user's body and using that chakra to amp his capabilities. The QB chakra and of course the other jinchurikis which would work the same way are a biju sealed within the user, giving the user user that extra strength, Choji Spill is a pill that you eat. These amps come from outside sources, but there is one amp that comes from your own body, the eight inner gates. When I talked about an exception before, I was referring to the gates, because they come from within, they don't come from outside sources. Now we can't really quantify how many times more powerful guy gets from gate to gate. He obviously gets much stronger, we see him using the sixth gate a couple of times during the series, then the seventh gate a couple of times as well, and then the eighth gate once. Each gate he progresses to that's a massive power boost. We never see Guy using the fifth gate, which is the gate we saw Lee using against Gara, which would have been a good comparison for me to show you that they actually multiply the user's strength, but that's okay. We have something else. We have the eighth gate, because we know Might Die and Might Guy both used the eighth gate to very different results. Now Might Die used the 8th gate against the 7 ninja swordsmen, which don't get me wrong, they're impressive, they're pretty powerful. And according to a filler episode, Might Die killed 4 out of the 7 ninja swordsmen in that encounter. Pretty good, but he had to 
sacrifice himself for that because that's what the eighth gate does. Now, might Guy fought against Jubidara with the eighth gate. And I don't really have to explain why that's more impressive. I mean, Jubidara could just fart on the seven ninja swordsmen and they would all die. And if the eighth gate was a simple addition to your strength, then killing four out of the seven ninja swordsmen wouldn't be an addition to might die strength that would justify might guy being able to fight and almost kill Jubidara. Because obviously Guy's eighth gate is much much more powerful than his dad's and there's a reason for that. Might Guy is in base much much more powerful than his dad too. His dad was a Ganon at the age of 35 when he died and Guy was a Jonin and he was very powerful in base already. He was clearly way above your average ninja. We can see that in the tuning exams when he's fighting hundreds of sound ninjas and then he's fighting Kisame in base for a good while too. So yeah, Might Guy is pretty powerful in base. He's a Jonin. He should be that powerful. His dad was a Ganon, so no, he wasn't very impressive in base. You can imagine that there is this massive abyss of a difference between Might Guy's and Might Dai's base forms. And when they both use the eight inner gates, especially the eight gate in this case, Might Guy, which is already much more powerful, gets a power boost that enables him to fight the strongest ninja that's ever existed. Well, Might Dai is able to fight seven powerful ninjas, but not nearly as powerful. He doesn't even kill all of them. Honestly, I can see Guy using the sixth gate to beat the seven ninja swordsmen that Might Dai fought. And he no diffs them with the seventh gate. I mean, one Hirodora kills them all. So obviously, Might Guy receives much bigger amps whenever he uses the gates. And that's because his base form is more powerful because the gates are force multipliers, unlike other Naruto amps. And as I mentioned before, that is because the eight gates powers come from within. Whenever the user opens any of the eight gates, he essentially unlocks the limiters within his body so that his own muscles and strength and speed and all that get more powerful. And the more powerful your base form is, the more powerful you'll become. So it's not like when you use your curse mark, for example, and you get the nature energy from outside, where you will depend on how much nature energy you'll absorb into your body to determine how much strength strength that amp's gonna provide you. The eight inner gates simply unlock your own capabilities and enhance them and that's why they multiply your strength. Because if you have better dormant capabilities than someone else, then you will have more powerful eight gates. And that's exactly what happens when Might Guy opens the gates against Jubidara. He becomes one of the most powerful ninjas that has ever existed. There are only a handful of ninjas that could have survived an encounter against eight gates guy. Jubidara was one of them and there is just a much higher number of ninjas that could have survived an encounter against eight gates might die. Three of the seven ninja swordsmen did and you can imagine that high tier ninjas in the verse would be able to do the same. At the end of the day he was a Ganon and he didn't have that dormant power that is unlocked by the gates. Guy on the other hand he had that in loads. Watch this video right here for more content like this. Subscribe to this channel and like this video too. Thanks for watching.